Good morning, my dear students. Uh, I decided to record a discussion on the questions that I have already given to you about the assignments. Today is the 25th, 9, 2021. And this is the question um, uh, is about the chapter one, characteristics and classification of the living organisms. Is a multiple choice question, one QP. So there we go. For those ones that they didn't especially send to me the question papers and the answers, so I can help them to find out, to work out the answers. It starts from question number four, this paper. So what is the approximate percentage of oxygen in the expired air? Terpsters, approximate means to guess, give a range. I mean, it's not exact number. So we just guess what is the percentage. Of the oxygen, expired air is the, is the air that you breathe out. It is exhaled, not inhaled. Inhale means sending in, to breathe in. Exhalation, to send out, to breathe out. <sighs> yes, send out. So this expired. And let's see, I give this example. So, inhale and exhale air. I mean, the air that you take in, you breathe in, and the air that you breathe out. How much oxygen it has? You want to make a comparison, to give the percentage out of 100% capacity. How much is the oxygen? How much is the nitrogen? How much is the carbon dioxide and the other gases? So when you breathe the air into your lungs, this air contains 20, 21% oxygen, 0.04 carbon dioxide, 79 nitrogen, 79%. So most of it is nitrogen. It's not oxygen. Oxygen is actually, if you breathe the pure oxygen, it damages your lungs, it damages, it's very toxic. So it always should be mixed with something. Like for example, the divers, they mix it with the um, other gases, the inert gases, like neon or like any, any kind of the inert gases. So this is not, this oxygen is, cannot be too much. So the, the air that you breathe in is 79% nitrogen the rest is oxygen 21 percent of course you you are breathing in to get oxygen so oxygen should be a lot and carbon dioxide should not be too, too much because it's very toxic for a body too it's very scarce the number but when the air goes into your lungs so the the gas will be exchanged there the oxygen goes into your blood and your blood will give the carbon dioxide, which is the product of the respiration in the cells, uh, to your lungs to, to send out, to excrete it, to send it out. So, of course, now the number of the carbon dioxide, when you breathe out, the, when you, in the exhaled, the air that you are breathing out, you send out of your lungs, it should compose more, uh, it should be the carbon dioxide inside, it should be more than the one that you send in. Because now, during the gas exchange, the carbon dioxide from your blood has gone into your lungs and then it should be sent out to get rid of it. So now you see the carbon dioxide was 0.04 when you inhale the air, but now when you are exhaling, sending, breathing out, it becomes 4% now. Okay, so if the overall of this now, in the exhaled air, the number of the oxygen should be dropped. Not too drastically, because most of the oxygen is absorbed by the blood into the body. So from 21, it decreased to 16. 16% become oxygen into the exhaled air, and carbon dioxide becomes 4. It is more than inhaled air. And the nitrogen is the same because nitrogen is not being used at all. So you just send it inside your lung and then out. It, you don't touch it. You don't use it. Okay, right? So what is the answer now? The answer should be number C. Option C is correct. 
because the amount of the oxygen should be 16% in expired air, not in not the inhaled air. In the inhaled, it is 21%. In the expired, or the one that you send out, because the, some part of the oxygen is being used by your body, so it is 16%. So answer is C. Now, question number five. Compared with atmospheric air, what does that mean? It means the air, the air that it is outside it surrounds you. It is called atmospheric air. Air breathed out. The air that comes out of your lungs, it is the air breathed out by a human. It contains, okay, it's comparing the amount of water, vapor, and carbon dioxide. We want to know what, what, how they, they change, okay? You should know that our body has lots of water. And this water should not be all kept in our body. Otherwise, our body becomes swollen and be burst. It should, we should excrete uh, either this water through urination, sweating, some part through evaporation, and some part of it, it changes into water vapor into your lungs and goes out. That moisture should be sent out. Why the water, it becomes some part, some of the water is the, from the food that you take and some of the water is being actually made, is the fluid inside your body, in, in the blood that is just circulating and some part of it, it's actually, it squeezes out of the blood vessels and is accumulating and is changed into urine or anything else. And also, some part of the water is the result of respiration because you know that inside the cell, there is respiration happening. And this respiration, uh, the formula is the oxygen mixes with the food, so it produces carbon dioxide, water, vapor, and also uh, a lot of energy. The energy is used, the water, the water, some part of it can be absorbed and used by the body. The extra amount of it should be excreted, should, you should get rid of it. And also carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide? So you see that during the respiration, that, that that's water which is produced actually should be somehow uh, sent out. So this is actually, this is your lung and this is the alveolus. I mean, one of the structures in your uh, in your lung, which is very tiny. And this has a lock, like a sac, actually, you call it as alveoli. It has a very large surface area because it is lot folded here like this. It has this kind of the shape and his very thin layer, thin membrane it has. So, and it is also in direct contact with the blood, a lot of blood capillaries. So easily by diffusion, the gases and the water and everything, they can be exchanged here. So the water which is produced in your body, the excess of it should be all uh, uh, from one way. It can be excreted in many different ways. One by urination, sweating, and some part of it is like by from the water, from the capillaries, from your blood. It diffuses into your lungs, and it is evaporated here, and it goes out. So it mixes with the exhale, the exhaled air. So the you see, and also carbon dioxide diffuses into inside your lung in the capillaries, and it diffuses out. So you see, the oxygen is coming from outside, so this is inhaled air, brings the oxygen, more oxygen, oh, you, but you know that not all the air contains oxygen, it's mixed with the nitrogen, carbon dioxide, many other gases, but well, it's 20%, 21% oxygen, and 0.04% uh, carbon dioxide when it comes in. But during, after the exchange of the gases, oxygen goes into your blood and goes to the heart and the rest of the part of the body, but the carbon dioxide from your blood and also water that are the products of the respiration, there are some part of them, they come into the lung, into the alveolus, they diffuse into it. And the, so, the, so the exhale uh, is supposed to have less oxygen and lots of carbon dioxide and also water vapor. So the water inside your lung, the air that comes out should be more than outside always. It's more damp, it's more humid inside. So let's go back to the question and show you again that. So we'll see which one. It, the first option, it says less water vapor. It shouldn't be less, less. No, so these two are wrong. So between the uh, option C and D, more water vapor, which one is correct? I know that it should be more carbon dioxide compared to the inhaled air. So the answer should be 
D. As the water from body will be excreted in form of water vapor and adding to water content of expired air. Question number six. It says where the urea is being made. The urea is being made urea, not the urine. Urea has been made in the liver, always in the liver. Okay? But the urine, which is the thing that comes out of our body, that one is made in the kidneys. Don't make mistake these two. So urea is made in the liver. The bladder is that sac that actually stores the urine until it is the time to uh, excrete it or to remove it from the body. Urethra, urethra is just the uh, is just a, a tube that connects the bladder to outside, so it sends the urine out. Now, question number seven: A rat has the scientific name Ratus ratus. You see this name is called a binomial system naming or scientific naming. The first name is like your initial name and the second one is your family name. But this shows, the first one shows genus, the second one shows species. And um, this genus name starts with the capital R and all are italic. It means that it is lean a bit. And the second name should be all in lower case so what do you, the two parts of this name refer to of course i told you the first part is genus the second one is species so it should be answer should be a oh we have this beautiful game again here so another way of using a dichotomous system of the keys and it's a series of two questions every time, two options that you have to choose and guides you towards the scientific name of that animal. Uh, let's have a look at this very beautiful series. Of, I really like this. It's like a game, as I said. So you see, every time you, it asks you two questions. Use the key to identify the bird shown in the yaga. I want to know which, which bird it is. It belongs to which, for example, uh, species. So at first, it's an option one. Uh, the toes joined by a flap of skin. Is the answer yes or not? Look at the toes. It's yes, they have a flap of skin. It means the toes are attached to each other by a skin, a tissue. But toes separate. No, they are not separate. So the option one I choose. So the answer is the toes joined by the flap of skin. What should I do next? Go to two. Okay, I go to two. Um, the beak. Uh, as long or longer than the head or the beak, not as long as the head. I show you, look at the beak. Beak is quite longer than the head. Its head is very small, but the beak is very long. So what should I do if the answer is the first one? Go to three. Okay, I go to three. Top of head is black or top of head is white. The top of head is black is the answer. So it is C or I will set. The answer is C. So question number eight, the answer is C. I hope you have understood this one well. Question number nine is about the characteristic of the living organisms. You know the living organisms? Mr. Green, so you have to remember Mr. Green. Um, they are like growth sensitivity, reproduction, um, nutrition, excretion, uh re respiration uh growth and these are the things like sensitivity movement there are the, the the things that the living organisms they do and the the one that are dead they are not alive they don't do now it says that phototropism you know that the part of the phototropism now is tropism is the, to to be sensitive to show some reaction to what? To photo. What is photo? Means light. So phototropism is the uh, is the reaction of the plants to the light. It means that they bends towards the light always. They show some reaction. Now it says, what does that mean? Which characteristic? Two characteristics of the living organisms. It shows. Is it growth and nutrition? Is it growth and sensitivity or movement and nutrition or nutrition and sensitivity? So the answer is that. 
uh, B because it shows uh, because it is growing is when the C is growing is getting bigger longer in size in the mass in the cells number of the cells but how it is always changing direction it is very sensitive because to light to photo to light so it bends towards the light it shows some sensitivity towards the light so it shows growth and sensitivity so the answer is b this is how you find out the answer now the next question question number 10 the table shows the scientific names and the common names of four plants the scientific name is given here the common name is this common name is something that we know and the common name is not always the same like at any uh, all the countries the different people they may give the different names okay in a different uh, cultures in a different language they come in a different common name some may know, know for example white pansy they do not know as a marsh violet water violet marshmallow to say something else in their own language that's why we cannot always use common name we use scientific name we want to uh, in our, our in the articles in the researches we want to for example point out to a specific for example plant or animal we should exactly use the scientific name because everyone knows the scientific name what exactly what actually means what the common name can be different so we use scientific name now which word in the name show that two of the plants share the greatest number of the features sharing the greatest number of the feature look um you should look for the genus name which is the same for both of the uh for example both of the scientific names or both of the plants okay you should look at the species that they share the same genus name if they want to have the same, the greatest number of the features that they're sharing, or they have the same, the greatest number of the features in common, you should look for the, those plants or those organisms that they, they have the initial name or this genus name. This is genus, this is species. They should be the same. So which one are they? The one is viola. Viola, the answer is C because it's the genus name and these two plants because the genus is the same so they share the most number of the characteristics and properties and the features so how many things in common so viola answer is c the genus should be the same number 11 the equation shows a chemical reaction that occurs in the living organism Carbon, uh, this is food, glucose plus oxygen. This is the formula of what? Respiration. The formula of respiration, glucose, which is food, plus oxygen. And it happens inside the cells. It gives carbon dioxide, water, and lots of energy. Isn't it? So which of these characters of living organisms in this question associated with respiration and nutrition? Is, this is respiration formula. So this is re or, or this respiration formula. Or is it nutrition too? The answer is B. This is not nutrition. This is all about respiration inside the cells, or in the living organisms. So the answer is B because it is respiration, but it's not nutrition. It's put across here. Yeah, it means it's not. So answer is B. Question 12. What is a correct way of naming an organism using the binomial system? Again, the same thing. You see, this is a binomial system. It has two parts. And it's a scientific name. I mean, binomial system is a scientific name. So, which one is the correct way of naming? You see, this is, um, I just check them one by one. You see, which one is the best answer? Common buttercup. Uh, Ranunculus, this is quite wrong because the, you know that the first, the genus name should be a start with the capital R and it should be written in italic. This is not italic too, this is wrong. This is italic and this one, this is not a, the common buttercup, it's a common name. This is wrong, no matter how. Usually the name, uh, the, the scientific names are very strange like this one. 
Ranunculus acris. So this is this is correct. This is the answer C. This is the genus. This is the species name. So the first one initial letter is capital here. This is a small or lowercase, and they are all written in a lining lining form. So they are not straight. So the answer is C. So we go to the next question, which is answer. This is question thirteen. Question thirteen. You see the leaf here. It has a lot of leaflets. They're all leaflets. You see one. This is one whole leaf, one leaf, but it is composed of many small leaflets. We call it as a leaflet. Remember this. This is leaf, one leaf, and this is has many leaflets. Okay. Now I want to identify. I use this key to identify the plant now. Again, like the previous one, every time I have two options that I have to choose. It's like you are on a road and the road is divided into two branches. So you do not know should you go to the left or to the right. So you have to decide based on the answer that you give. Yes or no? So leaf in more than one piece or leaf in one piece. You see the leaf is not in one piece. It has on more than one piece. It has a lot of leaflets, many, many pieces. So I choose left to move on the left road. This is wrong, totally. I don't go there. I go to choose between these two. Now, again, I reach to the junction. What should I do, left or right? I have to read first. Leaf edge jagged. Leaf edge is smooth. Smooth or jagged? Does it have a, is this rough or it is smooth? I look at it. You see, it has a lot of, tiny torn like structures around the leaf so it's not a smooth it's not a smooth so it is jagged so i choose to go to the left root this one so the answer is sorbus acuparia d you write d so the correct answer is d now question 14 there is a diagram show leaves and the flowers of the different plants as you can see now we are talking about monocotyledon and dicotyledon plants. You remember monocot and dicots as structures. In the monocot, I will show you. Wait, wait, wait. If you look at this diagram, you have monocots, so monocotyledon, and dicotyledon. This is a maze, one maze grain. You can't break it into two, like these two symmetrical pieces. Like, see, this has two uh, sides. We call it as this is one cot cotyledon, this is another cotyledon. It has two cotyledons. We call it as dicotyledon. The di means two in Greek. And this is one olive, it's one piece. You can't cut it into half easily. If you cut it, you destroy it. But this one, if you cut it, you see even always there is a small leaflet, a germination there. This is dicot. And what is other properties? If I don't look at the seed, but just look at, looking at the roots, I can know which one is dicot, which one is monocot. If you, if you take one plant out and look at the roots, if this is like this one, it's like an umbrella shape, it's like scattered, fibrous, this is, this is monocot. It's not very deep in the ground. But if the root is deeply go into the ground, there is a one straight, main root and the lots of tiny one branched out from it this is called the dicot this is for the dicot like rose rose has a dicot plant vascular this is the, the the stem look at the stem if you look at the inside it you see it has a lot of scattered dots there a lot of vessels there uh, the, the the things the vascular bond there are many but here it is on the round shape and the leaf look at the leaf in the maze it is long and the the veins in the leaf are parallel to each other but this one they all branch out or oh, they are radiated from one point you see one point and from there they radiate out this branch this dicot in the dicot look at the flowers they're always in the dicot, they're all multiplied four or five petals. These are petals, one, two, three, four, five. Or it can be 10, or it can be, for example, four or eight. So it shows that it's a dicot. But if this multiple of three, like three, six, nine, 12 petals, so it shows that it is a monocot. Okay, so now look at here. 
Now look at here. This is should be monocoat because it's a very long leaf and the veins are just parallel. So this is monocoat. This one is dicoat because this is a one main vein here in the middle and then branch out from it. So this is dicoat. This is dicoat again. They all branch out from one point. And here it is four petals. So it should be Di this should be dicot again, not monocot because it's a multiple of four or five. But here is six petals, it's a multiple of three. So this is monocot. So one and five are monocot plants. So one and five, so the answer is B. Question number 15 also is the same as the one that we answer. If, the, if we have is a binomial system or the naming or scientific name. So if you want to know which of the two plants or the animal or organisms, they share the most, for example, features with each other. I mean, very similar to each other. Regarding the features, they should be from the same genus. So you look at the initial name or the genus name. You see which one they are the same. This Alderia is not shared anyone but RN uh, Cola. It's two. So these two without even going further, for saving the time in answer, I know that these two should be the answer because they are this the initial name or the genus name is the same, similar. So answer is that this one is B Aranicola Cristata and Aranicola Marina. They all Shaming the most number of the features here yeah, together because from the same genus. Now again we have this um, this type of the questions that there is uh, a key given to you and you have to identify to which family it belongs to. So look, if I first read the first part, it has four petals or you have five petals. I count them. One, two, three, four. It has four petals. So what should I do? The first option is correct. So I should go to two. I choose this route. So I go to go to two. So I read the second options choices. Choose uh, stamens or it has six stamens. One, two, three, four, five, six stamens. So the answer is six. So this answer should be this one. I don't go any further because in front of it is written B, Brassicacia. Okay, so this is answer B. Now, some lizard detached the tails when threatened by a predator. Which characteristics is shown? So is it excretion? No, it doesn't have anything to do with excretion because excretion is just getting rid of the excess or wasted uh, uh, materials inside your body and send it out. It has nothing to do with coating your body. It's because of the fear. You want to save yourself. So is it growth now? Growth is uh, increasing the number of the cells, math, or is it getting longer in size or bigger? Reproduction, it means that to produce offspring. It's something similar, uh, similar to you. And sensitivity, yes, yeah. sensitivity is that you, detect, that you detect or you feel the changes in the surrounding and based on that, you take action or to, you make some reactions, isn't it? So number 17, the answer should be sensitivity or number D. This is very beautiful question again. You see the same thing again. So we start here. This is where we have to go. Now we are starting. You want to walk along this way and find out and find out what the name of organism is. So I should decide either I have to go to the left or to the right. So by reading the instructions inside the boxes, start here. Which class of vertebrates does Organum W belong to? Organum W has no scales okay so we go there, 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 there it has no feathers it has legs but no feathers and no scales so based on this look at the options given 
I just want to first go because I know the answer is amphibian. But I just want to know why it is not bad. It's not bad because the birds all they have feathers, isn't it? It has no feather. This organism W has no feathers. So it's not bad. How about fish? Because it has no scale organism W. So it cannot be fish because the fishes they have a scale. And also they, they don't have legs. Well, this one has legs. How about reptiles? Okay, reptiles, they have uh, legs. Uh, no feathers, but they have scales. Reptiles, they have a scale. So it can't not be reptile. So it should be amphibian. Okay? So the answer is A or amphibian. Students, you should make, be careful. When I give the answers, the questions that I have sent, so I just close that. If you send me after discussion, your answers or the papers to me, I should tell you that I cannot give any mark, assign any mark to you. I will check it for you, but I will just leave it blank, that section. It means that you have not passed out the question paper to me. So no mark will be given to you. I'm so sorry for that. So question number 19, the diagram shows an animal whose scientific name is Rattus Rattus again. So what, which genus does it belong to? Of course, the first name is Rattus, so it should be capital R. The, the Rattus B, the option B is the name of species, but C is the answer because it's name of genus. Okay, bony fishes, it means that the one they have vertebra, and they are is a bony, it's not uh, made of the cartilage like the sharks, okay? So what is the carcass of them? The main constant body temperature, maintain constant body temperature, or external ears present, external ear is not for the fishes. Jolly is like ice, I mean. So jelly covered eggs and scales. Bony fishes, they have jelly covered eggs. They have a scales, if you have seen the carp, like a carp, uh, I will show you the, the picture of the carp or any salmon. Uh, they have, they have a scales because they are bony fishes. They have their eggs all made and covered by the jelly things, a jelly tissue or substance so they can float into the water. And they don't have external ear, they have internal ear. They don't have like us any external ear that lob or anything. Um, they don't keep the constant body temperature. The te body temperature changes with the environment. They are cool below that. Let me show you some photo of them. These are salmon eggs. You see, they can float into the water. Once they come out of the body, they can be fertilized by the, the male fish. So the fertilization happens outside of the body. This had the very beautiful the uh, and let me show you the salmon how it looked like. This is a salmon. This is called carp fish. They are different carp fishes, but well, usually they live in the warm waters. They belong to rivers. They don't live in the ocean or the sea. Um, they are, they have they become these different sizes. They have different feeding style. Like some of them are carnivores, some of them are herbivores and they have the body is a scale it has a scales and they lay egg the eggs are like a in a jelly let me show you okay these are the eggs of carp this is very beautiful you see they are a jelly around them they manually can take out the spawn or the eggs of the fishes you see you bring it outside of the body in the uh, aquaculture farms, these are the eggs, and they mix it with the sperm of the male. So these are the eggs, too much egg it has it. They remove it from the body manually in a very big fish forms. This is a carp. Once they have done, they take the male, and this is all eggs, and they take the male and mix the uh, male's sperm with the uh, eggs as you can see to fertilize them so now you know that the answer is d the next question 21 what are the features of the leaves of a plant that is a eudicotyledon or dicotyledon die it means again so i have shown already too does it have a broad leaf yes does it have a parallel vein no so the answer is b 
the parallel vein allows for monocoat like maize. Many snakes that belong to the viper family are usually in the that they give birth to live young. So it is a characters of which vertebrate group? Vertebrate groups, that's the mammals. They give birth to the young ones. So that they have a live young and they we will call it as giving birth to the young ones. I mean, they, they develop they inside the body is called also as a viviparous, but I do not need to memorize this. This is a terminology that we use to give birth to the live young. Or just write giving birth to the young, the live youngs. Viviparous, it means, vivi means live. Paris, it means burying inside. It means that the young ones are alive and they, uh, they grow it inside, the baby inside the womb, and after that give birth to the live young. It's a, baby and oviparous it means that like you no know, they just without the all the develop, developments happens outside of the body of the parent mom now use the key to find out which group is the amphibian hair present hair absent the amphibian they don't have has hair belongs to mammals so we go to two so now number two do they have feathers present or there is absent is it feather? They don't have feather. The feather belongs to birds. So I go to tree because the feather is absent. Let's check tree. Dry skin or moist. Amphibians, they have a double life. They, go, they, they live either inside or outside of the water. So the body is moist, is very moist and thin so they can do the gas exchange. They can do breathe. They breathe with their skin. So through their skin, because it is moist, it has moisture, and it, ha it is very thin, so they can exchange gases also through their skin. Okay, so they have a moist skin, so we go to four. Does it have four limbs or no limbs? Number four, they have four limbs. They have limbs, they have legs, they have hands. They are not without limbs, because they need to walk on the ground too. They need also to crawl on the ground. They have short limbs. Okay, so it's the answer is C, group C. And question number four. So this is the diagram that shows the process carried out by the living organisms. This is light and green plant. So oxygen comes from atmosphere. So this is an example, or this is the meaning of process of uh, photosynthesis. So X is given to chicken and also carbon dioxide is given to the uh, atmosphere, to the air, and waste products also given to ground. So what is X? It's asking what is X, Ara? Is the excretion, nutrition, respiration, or sensitivity? What is given to the chicken is the food because chicken is eating the green plant and green plant is a source of energy or food and nutrients for the chicken. So during the photosynthesis, food is actually all those energies and the nutrients are actually stored inside the body of the green plant. Now the chicken comes and edit and transfer that energy and the nutrients to its body. So X is the meaning of X is a nutrition or feeding. So answer is B. Now look at 25, what is the correct way of naming a species according to binomial system? Many times we answered these things. So the first one, the first one, Homo sapiens. And uh, let me see, is it correct or wrong? And uh, it is correct, but I want to just check for all others. Why it is correct? Because these are lean in italic form, all of them. Uh, the name are quite uh, uh, italic, it's, it's like a Greek. Uh, you not, cannot understand it easily. So Homo sapiens is the two names. And uh, also the first one is in capital, the genus name, and the second all in lowercase. But the second one, the B number, so A is the answer. But why not B? Because, yeah, this is written in Italic. Both of the names, they don't have that much meaning that we know. It's all in Greek. But the problem is that the both of them start with the capital H and S, so this is wrong. Uh, C, human being is wrong, it's a common name. Sapiens is just, it's just the species name, it's only one, it should be two, Homo sapiens. So, answer is A. The diagram, next one, 26, uh, diagram show four uh, arthropods. Arthro means joint. 
Pod means legs. It means that the the legs are they have joints. Sorry, wait. Now the question is this: that how many of these arthropods are insects? So you should know the insects. The insects, like for example, that mosquitoes. You know they have a body which has three parts: is head, and then that's the uh, like a belly, and then the tail. So they ha they have three parts. You see these two, they don't have three part body. They are they are arthropod, but they are, don't have three part body. So they are not insect, crab, and this one. It's like a mite or something. So it has only two parts. This has only two parts, but it should be three parts. This has one, two, three, one, two, three. And you look at the legs. Look at the legs. These are four becomes eight. One, two, three, four, and two claws. So they cannot be. Uh, they can't be. But this one, one, two, three. It has six legs or three pairs of the legs. These two. So there are. The insects, they have three pairs of the legs. You see? So body is three parts, three section, and also they have three pairs or six legs on their body. So, and plus antenna, so antenna like this, small, short one. So these two should be the answer. What is the name? Pediculus and Anopheles. So it becomes... Um, how many of these arthropods are insects? The answer should be two, it means number B. So again, the, all the insects, they have a three-part body. They have three pairs of the joint legs, two pairs of the wings, and one pair antenna. Okay, so they don't, also they don't have a wing, so, so that's why they are not insects. They are not insects. Okay, thank you. So this is all. If you have any question about this question paper again, you couldn't understand, please let me know. I can explain to you again. Thank you.